guys, it's very important for me to tell you guys that if you end up with one of these or if you currently own one of these, it's not the end all be all. So today I'm going to share with you exactly the types of homes to avoid if you're buying a home in Houston, especially if you are moving into a market that you are not familiar with. I've had lots of people reach out to me who moved here and they regret where they moved to. They regret the builder they chose. They regret the neighborhood. They just, of course, they weren't my clients, but really. Number one, I would never buy with an entry-level builder. If you are looking for a long-term investment here in Houston and you want something that's going to appreciate the best, this is not it. When I say entry-level builders, I am talking about the mass production builders. They're usually one to maybe three builders in the area and they're building the same exact home or a variation of the same exact home and the entire neighborhood has thousands of nearly the same exact home and there's really no other features of the neighborhood. It might have a pocket park or a pool but overall they are just massively produced homes. They're great because they're affordable, but they're not so great because they use extremely cheap material. You're going to have problems later on, especially after the warranty expires. Number two, you're basically buying into oversaturation because eventually you have to resell that home. And if you're competing against a hundred different houses on your street that look exactly like your house, it's a good chance you're not gonna get back what you put in. And you're always going to be competing with the home builder because they're always gonna find another way to to add incentives and to make their new construction home better than your resale home that you bought from them. For the most part, unless you're keeping that home for a very long time, it's not going to appreciate. Number two is the buy in a flood zone. Uh, a lot of our master plan communities luckily are not in flood zones and honestly if you're moving to Houston, everywhere is prone to flooding. They're, you're not exempt from the risk. There's just some areas that are less risky than others. But the point is, is if you buy in a flood zone, you are taking on a lot of risk and you are also going to have very expensive insurance premium. If you're not in a flood zone, insurance is expensive here. If you're in a flood zone, it's even more expensive. And again, reselling this not saying that it can't resell, but it's going to take a little bit longer because a lot of people don't want to take on that risk. Number three is buying in a lower rated school district. Whether you have kids or not, one of the biggest driving forces, especially out here in the suburbs, is school district rankings and school rankings. So if you're buying in an area that has average rated schools or lower than average rated schools, it's not going to appreciate. Obviously, buying into the school districts, you're going to pay a higher premium, but your appreciation is going to be much better. And if you want to hold on to that house and rent it in the future, it's going to be a lot easier to rent a home in a top-rated school district and to resell it so much easier than in an average rated school district. And number five is homes that are backing empty lots. I am all for no back neighbors, but only if you know there's going to be no back neighbors for a very, very long time, whether it be it has a retention pond, walking trails, a road behind it, anything. But if it is an empty lot or it is privately owned land or nobody can tell you anything about the land behind your house, I wouldn't buy it, especially if I was going to live there for a very long time. Just the other day in Cyprus, I was passing a neighborhood that's been there for a very long time. There's probably 10 homes that back this back lot that was previously private farmland. It was completely forested. They, in the last year, just tore down all the forest, all that area that sold the land. You know what's going to come 20 feet to the back of their house? Big old industrial buildings. It's going to be like 200,000 square feet of warehouses, and it's going to be directly behind their house. So instantly, those homes have now lost a little bit of value, and it's going to be harder for them to resell that home, especially when they probably paid a premium when they originally bought it because there were no back neighbors. So I would just be a little careful about that. If you are local to the area or you've recently bought a house, please comment down below what you would avoid if you were buying a house here in the Houston area. Again, if you would like what I think is the best things to have when looking for a home here in Houston, make sure you download the guide. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.